Hello and welcome to part 15 of my rock creation series. In this video I want to take a look at how we can improve a little bit on the textures for our rock. And in this scene I've taken that original sized rock here and I duplicated it uh, one time and scaled it up and then I also duplicated it one more time and scaled it all the way down. So we have it uh, in three places here. And in order to compare the results for before and after, I made a similar copy with this, just with another instance, uh, and put them here. So at this time, these are identical. So this is the original uh, map or material, and this is the new one. So it's basically the same, um, like that. So we're gonna uh, modify uh, this one called A and see how we can change this to be a little better. So one of the problems that uh, happens when you try and scale things up and down is that it's gonna be um, looking different from uh, each other, depending on how close you are. So a very uh, a kind of extreme example is here, where the small one is placed close to the one uh, which has been scaled up. So you can see the texture behind is getting blurred out quite a lot. And at a distance, this might look okay, because, um, well, it's at a distance and it doesn't really matter that much. But once you get close, uh, it's going to be very apparent that they have very different uh, texture resolutions, so it's not looking as good as it might be able to. So the way to do this is, uh, I think it's called, it has a term called something about scale, object scale, something, and uh, it's basically just a matter of, instead of multiplying this by a fixed number, it's going to be about multiplying it relative to the size of the object that this material is applied onto. And the way to do that is to get the object radius like this. And then instead of multiplying it by one, then we multiply it by the object radius. Um, so if we take a look at what this changes for us, we can now see that it's getting tiled quite a lot, but the cool thing is that it's uh, tiled equally so um, the small one has the same tiling as the big one so from here on it's just a matter of tuning this a little bit so we get a, a more reasonable result out of this so the way to do it is to scale this down a little bit by dividing it by some fixed number we can say um, let's put in a constant here and let's give it a 2 to begin with and see what that does. And you can see it starts to scale up a little bit. So we, for example, give it 8. And it starts to be become a little bit more rock-ish. But at, at the distance it still looks kind of tiling. So I'm going to give it something like... 32 and then check it out at a distance so now it starts to look a little bit better but it's still not in perfect but at a, at a close range like here I'm actually pretty satisfied with uh, 32 um, but it's looking pretty well I would say um, so very close up this one is actually cutting through the, the camera yeah as you can see so close uh, and the, the big rock beneath is also pretty detailed. So let's say we look at this at a distance. Um, we might be happy with this as it is, but as you can see, there's quite a big difference. Uh, so this one looks more like a rock and this one looks, well, looks kind of blurry. Um, so the thing is that once we get really close, this one, this actually looks better. So the trick is really to see if we can do something about that as well. And it's not necessarily something we want to do, but it's it's good to know that we can do something about it. 
So what I'm going to do here is first to comment this and say this is our object scale scale version or of our texture and then we can make it a duplicate out of this and uh, make a distance blend between these two so um, let's just go with this multiply by one we don't need need to multiply it really but in case we want to scale this up and down maybe create a material parameter uh, which I will maybe cover in the next video uh, we can do something like this and actually convert this to a, a parameter um, but let's, let's not touch that for now actually uh, let's just leave it as a one here so it's, it's kind of hard-coded um, so let's also give this another uh, a comment and call this uh, distant texture distant something like that yeah and right now we don't have it connected to anything um, so what we need to do is to use the distance um, uh, node and what that does is to give us uh, the distance between two points in in the world and we need to know uh, the distance from the camera and the object itself so in order to do that we type in uh, world or position is all the way at the top this one and if we control alt uh, we can see that it's giving us uh, the distance or the position uh, for each current pixel in the world space so it's not like it's the center of the object but it's um, it's every pixel um, in world space and we want the distance from the camera so the camera can be found by typing camera position world space and that's going to give us this oops, uh, this distance so what we want to do with this is to blend these two textures depending on that uh, distance here so the way to do it is to you we can use a simple lerp um, if you've seen some of the other videos I've done you know probably what I'm talking about it's taking an alpha going from 0 to 1 and then it's going between these two uh, first at 0 it's going to be this one entirely and at 1 it's going to be this one so if we hook that up instead we'll see that uh, the texture is looking kind of distorted uh, at the moment and the reason for that is that the distance here is um, it's uh, going beyond 0 and 1 so we need to clamp this eventually so whoops not comment but clamp we need to clamp this so it stays between uh, 0 and 1 so once we have that uh, we have something looking different um, right now it doesn't really do anything when we get really close it just disappears and we don't really see any difference at all and the reason is that this is going to go from um, well it's going to be the distance and we need to kind of get it to a, a little bit of um, less distance so kind of normalize it you could say um, but uh, we need to control uh, we want a way to control uh, when um, it should be blending so what we can do here is to add a divide and then divide it by a certain um, distance so let's start off by 512 and then start to move closer so what we might not be able to see at this point is that it's kind of detailed uh, we can maybe make this a little bit bigger uh, we can see that it's detailed at this distance and then, then once we get closer it seems to be blending to something else right about here you can see and the only problem with this approach is that uh, for example we have a dark spot here uh, that kind of gets blurred out once we get closer because the texture um, from up here the object scale one which we might want to also rename to um, detail or close-up um, is uh, tiled in a different way so the same uh, patterns here are not uh, really 
uh, visible at this point here. So it's kind of um, it's a kind of an issue we can't really, to my understanding, uh, do too much about. Um, but anyway, uh, what I'm going to do here is to comment this one out and call this the distance blend. So that gives us uh, this setup here, and it just goes in. Yeah. So if we take a look at, uh, just save that. And then take a look at it um, like this. We can see once we zoom out, we get kind of this. Th this is the same at the distance. And once we get closer, we can see at this point it starts to blur out. Uh, but once we get closer in, it actually looks pretty good. So from here on, I would say it's it's merely a matter of adjusting. Uh, whoops, not that one. Um, this one adjusting the size uh, or the distance that where we want to blend. So let's put this down to, let's say, 128. It doesn't need to be uh, exact power of 2, but I just have a tendency to do that. Um, so let's see. Here it looks pretty. OK, so yeah, I know. I don't know. And when we zoom in here, we can see it, it changes quite drastically, uh, which might be something uh, you're going to be noticing. So what we can also add, keep clicking the wrong one, because I'm in the wrong folder, uh, is we can add a power node to control the, the fade. Um, so not a panner. Uh, where's it? Oh, no. There's a power node. Thank you. Um, I was pretty sure there was a shortcut for that. But anyway, um, so if we give it, for example, something uh, like 4, and then when we zoom in, we can see that it changes at this rate here. And if we type in something, let's say 40, something extremely high, we can see there's going to be a really sharp edge where when it starts to blend. So the lower this one is, uh, the less it's going to going to be. So actually, in this case, I don't know if you can go beyond uh, below. Interesting. I never tried that. Let's see how that looks. Mm. So the only problem with this is that once you get close to this, you can still see at this distance here, you can see some of the original one. Um, Behind, so I might have pulled it in a bit too close. So I'm gonna take this maybe, uh, let's say, let's say 200. And that might even be, be a little bit too close. So it's, Yes, this is the value you can play around with. And as I said in the beginning, it's not necessarily something you want to do. Uh, it's all a matter of um, what you want to accomplish. <clears throat> so when that is set, you can still uh, tweak this a little bit by, for example, instead of saying um, this should only tile once, then you can say maybe it should be tiling two times uh, to make it a little bit less obvious. Um, so you can see now this one changed at a distance. So once we get closer, it you can actually not see that much of a difference. You really have to know what to look for. Um, and up close, uh, we should, or we're still getting a little bit of a blend between the two, but it's still looking uh, reasonably okay. So what you can also do is to 
play around with the way you blend because this blend method is not necessarily the best one um, so actually uh, uh, epic they provide a different node for this um, detail texturing which uh, takes in a diffuse map which is corresponding to I believe this one and detail diffuse which corresponds to this one or maybe it's the other way around and then also it also takes a scale and a diffuse intensity and also handles the normal and detail normal and normal intensity so it basically takes both the diffuse map and the normal map and makes it uh, makes it blend in between the two um, so instead of the, um, using this one or we could maybe but to be honest I haven't really tried this one um, I would say what I ins did instead was to open up this one and then take a look at what this part does here um, because this is the texture for, for the detail diffuse and this is the texture for the diffuse so I thought maybe I could just borrow some of that logic and see if I could get something uh, better out of that than just using a lerp so that's actually what I tried to experiment a little bit with it does tend to give me something which looks a little bit better it's not uh, perfect at all but it's uh, worth giving a try see if you like so what we want to do instead of this lerp is replace it and then plug this one in instead so I would plug this one into the top here and our distant map into this one and then the alpha from the uh, from the distance blend so oops something like this and then this one into the base color so let's take a look at how that appears so one thing to to notice to begin with is that it kind of blends because it's it's now doing a multiply uh, always so it's always blending some of the the near map from even from a distance so even though it has some of the distance uh, distant map it also ha always have some of the close-up map so it's kind of blending in between the two and it's also also getting a little bit darker as you can see uh, from uh, when we get quite far away we can see that it's getting a bit darker and it might not be exactly what you want so you can play around with these um, settings here uh, so for example maybe add a little bit more like 0 0.7 and it's still a little bit you want to look at it when when you zoom in and see if the color changes too much and what's still point zero point seven it seems to be looking a little bit better um, but to be honest i haven't spent too much time with this i just wanted to experiment with this a little bit and see if i could get something which was kind of blending in between uh, both uh, object scale um, texture and also a distant blend and as you can see it's not perfect in any way because I'm losing a lot of the detail uh, using this method um, so if you have some better ideas I uh, suggest you uh, comment on the video uh, because I would be very much in interested in that um, <clears throat> but that's a little bit on some of the generic textures uh, how we can play around with that um, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to take a look at how we can play around with uh, a mesh texture, uh, which is something which you would consider um, unique for this, um, for a particular object. So by that, I mean, it's a texture that uh, you can't, uh, like we do here, scale up and down uh, with the UVs. Um, but something that needs to stay exactly where it is um, so we're going to take a look at that in uh, yeah the next video 
So I hope this was this was useful and um, you learned something. So seeing you in the next. Bye bye.